So now we're on to functions. Now functions allow you to break up your code into reusable blocks. You can think of it like that. Now we're gonna be looking at functions and how to use them. And this will help you out when you start to look at object oriented programming later on. And we have a course on that as well, which you can follow as well. So let's define out a function and look at what happens when we go ahead and use it. So we define a function with the function keyword and then we give it a name. And typically what we would do is we would name these in the same way that we name variables. Now again, there's no real strict rules as to how you name these, but the important thing is to keep consistency. So for example, let's define out a full name function. This is going to return to us when we use it a full name. Now what we do after this is use two parentheses and we'll look at what goes in here a bit later. And then here we define a block like so. Now what we can do is go ahead and use any other code inside of a function. There's really no limitation here. And just to kick things off, I'm going to go ahead and echo out at my full name. Now to call a function, we use the name that we defined for the function. So in this case, full name. And then to call it, Again, we use parentheses and we'll look at again later on what we put inside of here and we just end the line again with a semicolon. So let's look at what this does, give that a refresh and you can see it does in fact echo out uh, what we defined inside of that block. Now this is all well and good, but the proper way to do this is to actually return a value rather than go ahead and echo something out within a function. Now we're going to run this in the browser and you'll notice what happens. You can see that we don't see any value. That's because what's happened here is this has a return value now, which we then have to do something with. We're not actually echoing it out. We're returning it back from this. So in this case, we know that we can echo out full name because this will return a string to us and we can echo it to the page or do whatever else we want with it. So there we go. Now, again, you can do things like assign this to a new variable. So we could create a variable called full name and go ahead and assign that the value that we get back from this function. And again, down here, we can echo out full name. So things are pretty flexible here and you can see it works in the same way. Now, the correct name for calling a function is invoking a function. So if you ever hear anyone say invoke a function, then you'll know that that basically just means do this and that will go ahead and run it. It will return a value to you and you can do something with that return value. Now, at the moment, obviously, this function is pretty useless uh, just because it returns a hard coded value. You could have use for a hard coded value, but ideally what we want to do is be able to pass in some values to a function that are then used within that function. So let's say that we wanted to construct a full name based on a first name and a last name. Well, let's get rid of all of this and let's get rid of what we return in here. And now let's define some arguments or parameters. You'll find that they're called the same thing inside of the parentheses. These are just things that we can pass into the function when we invoke it or call it. So let's go ahead and define these out again using the naming conventions we've already used. We're going to say that we want this function to accept a first name and then we comma separate any arguments we pass in. So we're accepting into this function a first name and a last name. Okay, so now what we can do in here is whatever we want. So in this case, we'd want to concatenate the first and the last name together. So we say first name, we append on a space, and then we do the same for the last name as well. So let's try calling this now. So let's assign it to a new variable called full name and we're going to say full name. And let's just see what happens when we try and call this with no arguments. Let's go and refresh the page. And you can see here we have missing argument one for full name, missing argument two for full name. And then we get an undefined variable first name and an undefined variable last name. That's because the first two errors, we haven't actually passed the values in here that it requires. And second of all, because we haven't passed in the values it requires, we don't have these variables available. So let's go and pass in a first name and a last name. You can see you pass them in the order that they're defined. And again, you use commas here and you can pass any data types into a function. Uh, this could be a number. It really doesn't matter because again, we're working with a loosely typed language. We have the flexibility to pass any data type into here. So let's go and echo out that full name variable, take a look in the browser and now it works.
So you could do this in a variety of ways. It really depends on what you want to do. In this case, it might be better to return double quotes and then in here, define out the full name, a space, and then the last name or rather the first name, sorry. Let's just correct that. Uh, it would work in exactly the same way. And like I said, you can do whatever you want inside of here. So when you're building these functions, you can pass as many arguments as you want into them. Uh, but the important thing to note is you want to try and limit the amount of arguments you pass in as much as possible. If you find that you're passing in, say, 10 different arguments into a function, uh, you may need two different functions. Now, we can call different functions and place the return value of functions into another function if we wanted. So just as a really quick example and a kind of useless example, let's say we had a function that returned my first name. So let's return in here. Alex. So we're not passing anything into this, but what we could technically do now is go ahead and pass in the return value of that function into another function. So again, just by doing this, if we just pull this up a line, then we get the same result. So just a note there on how flexible this is. Now, just as that said, what we can also do if we just get rid of this uh, example here, we can also pass variables into functions as the arguments as well. So if somewhere we had a first name here defined out as Alex, and then down here we had a last name defined out as well, we can go ahead and we can pass these variables into this function. So let's go ahead and do that now, pass in the first name, and in here we're going to pass in the last name and you'll see it works in exactly the same way. So again, if you think that it probably can be done, then it probably uh, will be able to be done. It's very, very flexible. So just following on from this example, let's just get rid of these two variables just to tidy this up and let's just pass in string values in here. Now, what I'm going to show you now is an optional argument that we can pass through to a function. So let's say that we had this function and we want to keep this function that we've built as flexible as possible. Let's say that we might have something else that we want to pass in other than a space to basically separate the first and the last name. Well, what we can do in this case is we could create a new argument called a separator maybe. And what we could now do is assign this a default value. So we are allowing this to be passed in as a third argument but what we're also doing is assigning it a space. So if we don't pass it in, by default, it will be a space. So now what we can do here is in here, we can place in that separator and without adding a third argument to the call, remember before we got an error, you can see it just works in exactly the same way. Now though, I have the flexibility to pass in something else that I want to uh, space this first name and last name out. So let's say an underscore. Now, because this value has been passed in, this will be replaced by the underscore and therefore we'll have it there available. So let's give that a refresh and there we go. You can see that's changed over. Okay, so that should give you a good grounding as to what a function is. You know that you're gonna return a value here and you can use that however you want. But let's take a look at some other variations of functions that you might see. Now, what you can actually do is assign a function to a variable. So let's say we were to create a full name variable and we were to assign this function. So it's a little bit different to how we created it before. And then again, we can do the same thing. So in here, we can accept in a first name and we can accept in a last name. And let's accept in that separator as well. And we're going to set that by default to a space. And again, what you can do is you can add other things in here as well with default values. But what I'd always recommend you do is the optional ones always leave at the end. So always accept in first what you know you need, and then always add any optional at the end uh, with that um, default value. So now that we've done this, then we can do exactly the same thing. So in here, we're going to return the first name with that separator that we defined in there with the default space and then the last name. And now we need a semicolon on the end because we've defined it out in a slightly different way. Okay, so let's echo out, but now how do we do this? Well, we can't say echo full name and let's just try and see what happens here and we'll see what error we get. So let's go ahead and define my first and last name, give that a refresh and you can see here we get a fatal error call to undefined function full name. All that means is the function cannot be found. Now, because we've assigned a function 
to a variable, we need to call this as a variable. So it's not always uh, necessary to do this, but you might see this around uh, and that's exactly why we're covering it here. So now if we take a look at this, you can see that we get exactly the same result. So this is purely just preference as to how you're structuring your project. There might be uh, cases where you uh, may need to do this. It might be a little bit easier and then you may need to override this function. You may need to use it in a slightly different way. The most important thing to note though is the ordering of your code. Because you've assigned this variable here, you need to call the function after you've defined it. Now, if we take a look at this, if I go ahead and echo out full name like this, but define the function down here, let's see what happens. Now again, we get undefined variable full name because we defined a variable here, but we're trying to access it before it was defined and we see function name must be a string. So we get a couple of errors. Now, if we were to return back to the original example, so let's just very quickly map this out, full name like so, and remember into that, we accepted a first and last name. So let's just add these in here, first name, last name, and then we returned the first name here and the last name. Let's now try and call this down here. So we're gonna echo out full name and then give them two arguments that we defined in there. Now this is gonna work, we know that that works, but if I take this and call it up here now, Notice that works in exactly the same way. So if you are, and I'll just revert this code so we can see the uh, example we had before. If you are defining a function like this, remember you can't call it before it's defined. So just a really important thing to note. So for the basics of functions, that pretty much covers it. We've looked at a couple of ways that we can do this. We've looked at how to pass arguments into a function, how to return values from a function, and also optional arguments as well. Just remember that because this is a block of code, you can do anything you'd like inside of here. And we'll be taking a look at examples of that a little bit later on.